How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about Bitcoin again and I actually don't want to make that many videos about Bitcoin but due to its recent astronomical rise and it just keeps on going up and up, I feel like I have to keep on updating um, just to let people know where I'm at and what I think of all the increases in price. Since I first recommended people to invest less than 10% of their investable portfolio into Bitcoin, the price at that time was 2,500 or so. And since then, it's nearing about 400% gain. This is not about tuning my own horn, mainly because of the nosebleed gains. It's actually worrying me uh, more than me saying, you know, hooray, you know, go up more and more. Before I talk more about this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Now I've said this before, you don't actually need a lot of technical competence in order to invest into Bitcoin. You can just go on coinbase.com, uh, register for a brand new account. You can use my referral link down in the video description below, where if you use my referral link, you get another $10 if you buy at least $100 of Bitcoin. Now Coinbase does charge you a fee whenever you buy or sell. They will charge you a minimum of $2.99 for anything about $204 or less. They will charge you $2.99. So the sweet spot here is if you're gonna buy into it, if you buy $100, it'll cost you $2.99 in fees. So if you buy $204, it'll also cost you $2.99 in fee. Now, with the referral bonus, um, that will be $10 minus the $2.99. You're still going to gain about $7 of free money just for buying $204 worth of Bitcoin. After you buy a little bit and get a little bit comfortable with it, you can go on to the website GDAX. GDAX.com is owned by Coinbase.com. If you buy and sell on that website and if you're a maker of the market, then you do not have to pay a fee at all. So you can sort of transfer money instantaneously between Coinbase and GDAX and easily buy and sell. The transactions is instantaneous between those two websites because it's by the same company. Now the thing to do is you sign up for that Coinbase thing. It is a referral link, so you will be benefiting this channel if you click on that link and sign up. Then what you do is buy your $204 of Bitcoin, and then if and when you want to sell, you can transfer it to GDAX and then sell it there for no fees at all, and then you'll get the full price without paying any fees. You can then easily instantaneously transfer it back to Coinbase and then transfer it back to your bank account as you wish and all of this without any fees. Now recently it's gone up so much, we saw $7,000 pass by, $8,000 pass by, $9,000 pass by, and right now it's about $9,700. And it's, it, you know, in a day or two, I feel like it's gonna hit 10,000 very, very quickly. Because of this astronomical rise and because there's gonna be a sprinkling of people, you know, some people that you know, is going to have Bitcoin. For example, I do. And then when I hang out with people, you know, people are going to ask me about that. Or, you know, I have the urge to be like, hey, you know, if you buy Bitcoin, remember I was telling you about it, you know, a while ago. Uh, and I actually did this. And the fear of missing out FOMO is going to kick in. People are going to go, oh, man, it hurts. It brings people pain to hear that they could have done something to increase whatever they put in, whatever they invested by 400 percent. You you buy one Bitcoin, $2,500 back then. And wow, today it's already $10,000. This is a lot of money. And because of this, when people hear of this, people feel physical pain when they hear this. So then they're going to go, oh, no, you know, you know, I should have bought it. And this, this pain, it's going to cause people to, um, you know, try to suppress it, I guess, and then go, you know, I really should just invest now just in case I won't be in more, even more pain later on. Imagine how people will feel if it hits $20,000 and then they would go, oh, you know, I should have bought it at 10,000 and now it doubled even again. So this whole thought of fear of missing out, it's really um, listening to everybody and it's only going to get worse because you're going to have more and more people, um, you know, talking it up with everyone because whenever the market is doing well, kind of like in the dot com days and people are going to go, oh, look, I made so much money. And then they go buy some fancy car. They drive it around. Their neighbors can see them. And then they also think, oh, I should do it too. You know, so it becomes a self feeding thing. It's kind of like a virus. It takes a little time to permeate through all of society. Right now, Bitcoin is, you know, not 
too well known. It's starting to get there because you know I just saw it on uh, on TV the other day, and you know they report on it. And some random Joe that never heard of Bitcoin is sitting in their living room, and then they heard of this, and then they're like, "Oh, what is that? Okay, let me go online and figure this out. Let me go on YouTube, and then you find this video, and then you go, "Oh, okay, let me go on and buy some Bitcoin." This brings me to this wonderful graph of stages of a bubble. Now, before I talk about if it's a bubble or not. I notice that whenever I talk to people and I say that it is kind of like a bubble, some people are very, very adamant, or they get very defensive even. And even in this video, I'm sure a lot of people in the comment section are going to be very defensive about this and going to say I am, you know, complete idiot for saying that it's a bubble. Bitcoin is not exactly like a bubble. It's nothing like it. Uh, Bitcoin is a currency. It's the currency of the future. It's here to stay, etc., etc. Before you let go of the thinking that it's not a bubble at all, think about all the previous history of anything. Of course, you can say it might be different this time, but every single time where people say, you know, it's not a bubble, they always have some excuse of saying that this time is different. It's always this time is different. At the dot com days, this time is different. At the housing bubble, this time is different. So I should buy right when the house is really, really high. It's always gonna keep on going up higher. Here are the stages of a bubble, except it's a little bit more pronounced than the cycles of a stock market. In the very beginning on the left side, you'll see early investors. These are the really, really early people the ones that we're hearing on the news right now that are millionaires, multi-millionaires, they bought it at like a few dollars and then they put like everything they have in it. These are like the unicorn people. They got really, really lucky. Or maybe they see the future in Bitcoin, but for any Bitcoin-like thing, there's always someone else that saw the future in something else that completely failed and no one's reporting on those. They're, they're not gonna have a news article where, oh, some guy, put all his money in something and he lost all his money. And you know, you never really hear articles or news stories about that. And that phase of things is in the stealth mode where you know I probably didn't even hear um, about it at all. Although I did hear about it many, many years ago before I actually invested, I did not make the leap to actually buy into it. So those stages would be, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, you just kind of hear in passing and only the very brave or just kind of putting a little bit in. And then as there's more and more market adoption, it becomes the institutional investors. They put more and more money in. We are hearing this about now. The exchanges are adding it in. And then you have some investors that are able to, um, you know, buy options or something like that into Bitcoin. So it's becoming more and more mainstream. So you see, as we climb up, there's a little sell off. And I believe that sell-off is when we saw it go from uh, 7,000 to about 5,500. As we get to the phase where more and more people are actually buying into it, this is a pretty dangerous area because when you see Bitcoin at $10,000, people get greedy. People look at it and then go, oh wow, you know, long time ago it was 2,500, now it's $10,000. What makes you think that it won't go to $40,000? And other people would just kind of do this un one upmanship in news articles, like, oh, it's going to be $40,000. And then another news article will be like, in one year or two years, it's going to be $100,000. And then another one that goes, it's going to be $500,000. You know, it just keeps on increasing higher and higher. So let me just read the rest of the graph here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be a bear trap, which means it comes down a little bit. And some people who are really afraid, um, they see it come down, they're like, oh, forget it, I lost a little bit of money. Um, they sell everything, but little did they know that this is just the beginning. I think this is just the beginning too, because not that many people are invested in it. So this is why this is, pretty dangerous right now because if you buy in right now, I feel like if it crashes, and I'm not saying that it will, I'm just saying if it does, because I don't know, it will most certainly go below that $10,000 because I feel like the mean is a lot lower and I have no backing of this because you know it's just my gut feeling. There's no way to value how much a Bitcoin is these days. So um, that's what it is. The next one is media attention, which we already know 
media has attention of it already you know in uh normal bloomberg news they always keep on covering bitcoin these days like, bitcoin is at whatever bitcoin you know every one thousand dollars uh leap it's gonna go oh bitcoin is ten thousand dollars bitcoin is eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand dollars twelve thousand thirteen fifteen thousand twenty thousand twenty five thousand the next phase is enthusiasm Okay, so when people are finally buying into it and everyone is buying into it and people are almost sure that it's going to keep on rising every single day, then that's enthusiasm. And when you see this, then people pile in. There's gonna be a lot of greed going on. There's gonna be a lot of FOMO happening and people don't want to miss out. People see other people being greedy. Oh, I just sold some uh, Bitcoin and then I bought me a Tesla Model 3. Then it becomes a delusional phase and then it becomes a new paradigm phase, which is like basically people like, oh yeah, this is you know the norm. Bitcoin is the norm. It's supposed to be at uh, $35,000, $40,000. You know, people are just, new paradigm just kind of means they're used to it. It should be at that amount and it's generally an accepted uh, valuation of Bitcoin. Everybody goes, oh, of course, it's, $100,000, of course it's that much. That's how much of Bitcoin is valued at right now. Then all of a sudden something starts to turn. It starts to dip a little bit and people go, oh, this is just temporary, okay? Um, people go, why don't you just buy on the dip? People like to keep on saying that, buy on the dip. And then you're gonna be in a bull trap here because when you are very bullish about the Bitcoin, um, it drops a little bit and people go, oh, wow it dropped like 20%. Now is the time to buy, you know, everything. So if you had like 10% of it, you know, like then you might be tempted to put a lot more in it because you think, oh, it's just gonna bounce back up. So that is the bull trap. Then it comes back up a little bit because you're gonna have a lot of people that is joining in the, into the bull trap. They're buying on the dip and it comes back a little bit. So this would be called return to the new normal. But because the market is starting to realize that this is an asset bubble, uh, there's still a lot of fear going on. People are you know, just selling left and right a little bit trickle at a time. So it's gonna keep on you know, trying to drive the price down just based on demand. So if there's a lot of people selling, of course, this asset price is gonna keep on going lower. Then once it dips a little bit too far, let's say $10,000, it dropped all the way down to $4,000. That is gonna be the point where people are fearful. You put in your life savings, $10,000 per Bitcoin, and you just decided, oh, I wanna put all my investable assets in it. You put $100,000 in, which is your life savings. You took everything, piled it into Bitcoin, and overnight, you saw it go from $100,000 to $40,000. This is 60K of money just evaporated into thin air. Then that is the point where you sweat bullets and then you are fearful. Then you have capitalization where finally, okay, it reached $44,000 per Bitcoin again, $3,000, and you're like, oh, wow, this is the new reality. I lost money. It'll take probably two, three months to realize this because once you lost it, you know, you might think, oh, it might come back up, but then, you know, you have to be in that new reality for quite a while before it sinks in. Then when it sinks in, then you start to accept the reality. When it drops significantly, let's say it drops down to $1,000. This is where people are just hating Bitcoin. People don't want anyone, any Bitcoin because they think that there's no future for it. That's why there's despair and people are just selling it. It's just a very bear market. People don't want to, anything to do with it because so many people lost so much money, lost their whole life savings, and this is going to happen. I feel like this is really, really gonna happen. And if anything, this might just be the next thing that uh, could um, really bring down our economy. If enough people join into it thinking that they're gonna make a quick buck really quickly and more and more people go into it, more and more people are going to lose a lot of money. This is what's going to make people really poor basically. And then all of a sudden overnight, they're not gonna have any expendable income. They're not gonna be able to go out and buy stuff and support the economy. It's gonna bring a lot of the economy down basically. So this is where despair comes in. People are in despair. 
it's like there's no hope. Oh, this is, you know, everyone lost a lot of money. Just a, generally a very bad mood throughout everywhere. People, you know, might not even want to go out as much because they don't have as much money, not mu as much expendable income to go to restaurants and things. Then after a long period, and I think this is going to take a long time after it hits this despair period, probably, I don't know, six months or more before that price will just slowly trickle back up. And, you know, people are more attuned and may not want to repeat this bubble again. They're like, oh, you know, Bitcoin, I got so burned from that, you know, people are not going to jump in and into this asset bubble again. So then the new normal is going to be um, go back to the real mean of what it's supposed to be worth. So then right now I feel like, and I have no proof of this, I feel like the real uh, worth of it could be $2,500, $2,000, $2,500 for the actual mean. And you see in this graph, it's kind of slowly rising up. And many, many people do think that Bitcoin is kind of getting ahead of itself. It looks scary. I personally am not actually putting more money into it. I'm actually extracting money away from it. I've already um, extracted enough to take away my initial uh, buy-in. So all that cash that I actually earned with my labor um, that I put in initially, I already took out. So I'm not going to lose any money if this ever, you know, if this bubble ever pops. In fact, right now, I think a good thing to do might be to dollar cost average out of this asset. I don't know when it's ever going to pop. If it ever will, maybe it will never pop. For me, I am thinking about selling a portion of it, um, you know, maybe even one tenth of it, just small bits of it at a time so that I can reap the benefits of this $9,500 that we may not and never ever see again. Now, I think it was Mark Cuban who made a fortune when he had a lot of stock options at a company. Um, he had a lot of stock in it and he sees it back at the dot com days, I think, where he saw that it was an asset bubble and he started buying put options on his stock so that if it ever drops a lot, um, he would still have the option to sell it at a really high price. So that was an insanely smart move. And, you know, that's why he's a billionaire, I guess. For Bitcoin is a little bit of a different story because Bitcoin is so volatile, the option pricing uh, to buy a put on Bitcoin is very, very expensive. So my take on it is, yeah, you can buy put options, but it's going to be very expensive to keep it up. You can certainly do something like that. However, for me, I don't want to deal with all of that. So for me, I think instead of buying uh, put options, I am actually dollar cost averaging out of it. So I sell a little bit at a time. I'm not going to sell 50%. Maybe I'll sell like 5%, 10% or something like that. Just, just, you know, shave off the cream a little bit and uh, you know, I sold a little bit at 7,500 and now it's at 10,000. Well, you know, I sold a little bit. I'm not too hurt by it, but you know, I could have made a little bit more, but I feel a little bit safer for, um, averaging it things out and also taking out my initial pr initial principle. I hope you enjoy this analysis of Bitcoin. I guess we'll find out. You can leave a comment, leave some hate comments down below and say I'm really stupid. Why why do I make financial videos and I talk about, you know, Bitcoin being an asset bubble and things like that. Give me a like on this video. Tell me what a fool I am in the comment section. If you're interested in supporting this channel, check out my Coinbase referral link down in the video description below where, like I said before, you can get $10 and even after the fees, you can still pocket $7 of it. I also have an audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook and if you don't like this audiobook you can cancel it before the subscription ends and you can still keep this audiobook for free i also have a patreon link over here where i give members perks such as help with their credit score or help with their finances thanks for watching